Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're gonna to talk about the Dell PowerEdge T630 Tower Workstation. In this video, we're gonna specifically focus on drives, both hard drives and solid state drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. It's a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge T630 Tower. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll hop in. Uh, this video is gonna be specifically dedicated towards drives, both solid state drives and hard drives. We figured it was time for a nice little refresh uh, for a slightly older system from the 13th gen and just give everybody up-to-date specs with what is actually compatible. This is one spec sheet that I did notice from Dell that isn't very clear. It doesn't really list out all the drives and what are the max sizes and speeds. So we thought, hey, this could be a good opportunity to help people learn a little bit more about their machine as a whole. All right, so here's what we're gonna do in this video as a whole. We're gonna go over the different types of compatible interfaces. We're gonna go over the max speeds and the max sizes. Then we're gonna show you how to install, which is super easy because this is a hot swap machine. And then at the end, we're gonna show you a cool tool that we like called HD Sentinel, which will show you how to test the power on hours and the health score for for your drives. So let's go and hop in. All right, so let's start with the compatible interfaces. There's four types. You're gonna have a SATA hard drive, a SAS hard drive, a SATA solid state drive, and a SAS solid state drive. No, unfortunately, NVMe is not compatible with this box, so those are gonna be your four choices. So what speeds can you use with each of those? Well, with a SATA hard drive, you get 7.2K RPM, that's it, that's, that's gonna be the slowest, unfortunately, of the four choices, but that's what you can get with a SATA hard drive. With a SAS hard drive, you can get 7.2K, but you can also get 10K and 15K, so it will be faster. But I wanted to note that with 10K and 15K RPM, if your SAS hard drive is three to five years old, the ball bearings will wear out. They are very prevalent and prone to wear out, so just know that, and it might be time to replace it to a solid state drive or have a spare on site, especially if this is a live production important drive. So just know going into it that a uh, SAS drive uh, is prone to failure three to five years down the line just because the ball bearings will wear out. All right, what about for our solid state drives? For a SATA solid state drive, you're gonna get six gigabit per second. For a SAS solid state drive, you're gonna get 12 gigabit per second. So those are the different speeds overall. So what about the different sizes of drives? Well, the sizes of drives depend on the type of chassis you have. So this chassis is an eight bay large form factor, but there's also a uh, small form factor chassis. And there's also even a 1.8 inch chassis. We're not really covering the 1.8 inch chassis in this video right now. We're gonna talk more about the 2.5 inch and 3.5 inch. So if you're using a 2.5 inch small form factor SATA hard drive, you're gonna get two terabytes. With a SAS hard drive, you're gonna get 2.4 terabytes. Now, if you were to bump that up to a large form factor, you can get 22 terabytes on SATA and 20 terabytes on SAS. And I wouldn't be surprised if someone drops a comment down below saying they've put in something higher than that, and we'd love to hear it. That's what we've put in and what we've played around with and what we have seen uh, able to work. All right, what about for the solid state drives? Well, you're gonna get 7.68 terabytes for SAS and for SATA solid state drives. And that's gonna be the same because uh, they're, all the drives are 2.5 inch and we'll show you when we do our install. If you have a 3.5 inch machine, you're just gonna use a converter or an adapter to your tray in order to install the 2.5 inch drive. So they're gonna be the same for small form factor or large form factor chassis from a size standpoint for solid state drives. All right, well, now that we know a little bit more about the compatible interfaces, the different speeds, the max sizes, let's show you how to install one, which again is super easy because it's hot swap. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear and be right back. All right, have my ESD gear on. We're safe to work on our T630. So we're gonna remove our old 500 gig so we got just some old 500 gig SATAs in here. You know, good drives back in the day, but we're trying to breathe some new life into this. So we're gonna upgrade it to an SSD and get rid of our old hard drives. So uh, you'll notice when we did remove it, you just simply just push the latch and you just slide it right out. It's a very, very easy. And when you put it back in, it's kind of the same deal. You just slide it back in. and. So it's a very, very easy install and a very, very easy upgrade. So you literally just are gonna pull these bad boys out and slide them out. So all right, it's the same thing here. So this is actually one of the things I did wanna show you is that uh, the converter or the adapter. So when you have a large form factor chassis, you are gonna be putting in a small form factor drive technically for an SSD. So you need to have this converter with this tray. When you go to our website, we sell this as a kit uh, so that you don't have to run around and pick it up all over the place. Uh, this will all come together and we will have the option to overnight it if needed. So all right, this is how easy it is to install. It's just like the drives you saw us install a second ago or the hard drives. You're just gonna push it right here. 
click into place. Super, super easy install. One of the things we always recommend if you want to extend the life of your T630, you just want to give it a couple more years, you're not ready to go buy a new uh, 16th gen server. They're you know, really expensive right now. This is a great option to extend the life and keep this going for a few more years. All right, now that we know how to do our install, let's show you how to test with a cool tool called HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now. And as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. Like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%. So all pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom built server or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock. So you can go reach out to us at sales at cloud sales at cloud ninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.